Welcome back to Junior Cycle Business Studies and in this video I am going to show you how to do a final accounts question which includes an income statement and a statement of financial position. A number of students have commented on the videos to ask me to do a statement of financial position question. So just to be clear with everybody, a statement of financial position is part of your final accounts question. So an income statement comes first followed by a statement of financial position and these were formerly known as a trading profit and loss and balance sheet question but in the new junior cycle which you are now studying these are known as an income statement and a statement of financial position okay so the first thing i'm going to do here is just to tell you where i got this question from so this one is from the 2018 ordinary level business studies paper and this can be downloaded and printed off from examinations.ie okay so in front of me here I have the trial balance which includes all of the information we need for our income statement and statement of financial position so reading the question the following trial balance was taken from the books of Marta Limited on the 31st of the 12th 17 the end of the financial year the authorised share capital is 430,000 at one euro each and we know that this figure will be going into our finance by section of our statement of financial position so I'm going to mark that with an FB. Cash sales is going to be in our income statement, I'm just going to mark all of these items. Cash goes into our cost of sales, <coughs> sorry cash purchases cost of sales. Carriage inwards goes into our cost of sales, opening stock cost of sales, wages, insurance, light and heat, telephone, advertising are all expenses. Dividends paid will go into our income statement. I will explain what dividends are when we get to that section. A bank overdraft um, is a current liability. Okay, so it's, it's a bad thing. We have to pay it back. Cash is a good thing and it's quick and it's easy to access. It's a current asset. Issued share capital uh, will go into our finance buy section and buildings, uh, motor vehicles and machinery are all fixed assets, large items which cost the company a lot of money and that they're going to be in the company for a long time. Closing stock then at the 31st of December 17 was 25,000. This goes in both our income statement and it is also a current asset because it's sitting on our shelves at the end of the year. It's it's of value to us. It is a current asset. Okay, so I'm going to flick over to the question sheet and I'm just going to read this here. From the given figures, prepare a trading profit and loss appropriation account for Mart Limited for the year ended 31st of the 12th, 2017. Okay, now I'm going to immediately change that to an income statement and part two it says a balance sheet I'm going to change that to the new terminology a statement of financial position an income statement and I'm just going to squeeze this in here a statement of financial position okay so they want us to pre prepare an income statement and a statement of financial position so <clears throat> you can also print off this answer sheet here and at the top I also must change trading profit and loss appropriation account to income statement and in your new junior search this will already say income statement for you you will not have to change this. I only have to change it because this is this is last year's paper. Okay, so sales, the first item we need to put on here, and you put that right into the far right hand column, 500,000, and then we must take away what it costs us to get those sales. This cost of sales. Okay, so we can see from our information, 
that our cost of sales will be purchases. We have carriage inwards. <coughs> And we have opening stock. Okay, and each of these ones are going to be added up, I suppose maybe in middle columns. So purchases are 320,000. Carriage inwards, what it costs us to transport the goods into our company, 16,500, and we had 28,000 euros worth of stock at the start of the year. Okay, so I draw a line under those. Get my calculator. So, my new calculator from the pound shop, I think 199, 320 plus, sorry, 320,000 plus 16,500, 28,000. It was 364,500. And I just fill that in underneath, 364,500. And this is called the cost of goods on our shelf, cost of goods available for sale. Okay, after this we have to take away our closing stock. Closing stock in this question is down at the bottom. Don't forget it. It's 25,000. <coughs> 364,500 minus 25,000 equals 339,500. And I'm just going to put that out here into the right hand, hand column. 339,500. Okay. And the next important part of information that we're looking for in our income statement is our gross profit. So it's our sales less the cost of sales equals our gross profit. So it's 500,000 minus 339,500 equals 160,500. Okay, and that's our gross profit. So now we have a few more figures to put in here. So our gross profit, we need to take away our expenses. Okay, so less expenses is your next heading. Okay, and if we look over here to our question sheet, we can see that we have five expenses. So wages, insurance, light and heat, Telephone, advertising, and that's it. Five expenses. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're going to add these up in the middle column. So wages are 56,200. Insurance, 12,400. Light and heat costs 7,600. Telephone costs 5,100 and advertising costs 14,200. Be careful with your figures, always put the correct figures in um, because if you leave out one zero, it becomes a completely different figure altogether. Okay, so I'm going to add these up. So 56,200 plus 12,400 plus 7,600 plus. 5,100 plus 14,200 equals 95,500. Just going to put that out here in the right hand column. 95,500 total expenses. So our gross profit, take away expenses. So 160,500 minus 95,500 equals 65,000. And that's going to give us our net profit, 65,000 net profit. Okay, there's one more thing that we must include here, and it's dividends. Okay, less dividends. 
So I suppose just to explain quickly what dividends are. Um, dividends are a sum of money that are paid to shareholders. So for example, um, if um, a shareholder invests in your company, in this instance, Mart Limited, um, they'd be hoping that those shares increase in value. And this company, every now and again, maybe once a year or once quarterly, they might pay their share shareholders a certain percentage of their profits. Okay, So in this case, um, the dividends paid are to the value of 38000 for this uh, trade in year December. So this company, Mart Limited, gave 38000 to their shareholders, I suppose, as a return on their investment, okay? So we take 38,000 from the 65,000 net profit. So 65,000 minus 38,000 equals 27,000. Okay, and this figure is known as our P and L balance. And that's our profit and loss balance, okay? So we can just draw a double line under that, 27,000. <coughs> And that's our income statement done. Okay, I'm going to flick over onto the next page. And don't forget that you can print these off from examinations.ie. So again, I'm just going to change the terminology here at the top of the sheet. It's not called a balance sheet anymore. It's called a statement of financial position. Okay, sorry, I have to squeeze it in there. Statement of financial position of Mart Limited as at 31st of the 12th, uh, 2017. Okay. So always at the top of our statement of financial position is going to be our fixed assets. And across the top then we're going to have cost, depreciation, and net book value. Okay. There, the headings on the top of our statement of financial position. And again, I always try to emphasize neatness to my students because as an examiner, when I see students who are lovely and neat and particular about their work, instantly it's a nicer paper to grade, it's a nicer paper to read, so it's, it makes life easier for me. So in my eyes, I always say to my students, you're in the good books from the get-go. Okay, so fixed assets. In this question, we have billings. We have motor vehicles. And we have machinery. Okay, and the cost of these fixed assets are 280,000 for billings. 44,000 300 for motor vehicles and 62,500 for depreciation. Now, in this question, we don't have any depreciation. Depreciation is the amount of value that a fixed asset may lose in one year. In this question, we don't have any depreciation, so we can consider that these fixed assets haven't lost any value. So their current value, their net book value, is worth the same or, uh, as, as the cost. So just transfer those figures down to the net book value. If you had depreciation in a question like this, you just put it in this section and you take the depreciation from the cost. So cost minus depreciation equals your net book value. Okay, we're going to add them all up. So 280,000 plus 44,300 plus 62,500 equals 386,800. Nothing for depreciation, 386,800, okay. And these are known as our uh, total fixed assets, okay. You, you can write that in if you need. Um, it's not essential, total fixed assets, okay. So. The only figure we need here is the net book value, so we can draw a double line under the first two, and we can draw a single line under the first one. Okay. Our next heading is going to be current assets. Okay. So 
Okay, and we can see from this question that we have two current assets marked. We have cash, which is a good thing and it's easily accessible. And we also have closing stock, which is um, also a current asset because we can sell it and we can make um, financial turnover from it. So it's easily accessible. It's a current asset. So cash and closing stock. Okay, so we're just going to add these up in the first column. So cash is 7,200 and closing stock is 25,000. Just going to add these up and transfer it out to the middle column. So it's going to be 32,200. I can do that off the top for head. Okay, the next heading we have is cur current liability. So less current Okay, so that's just our, our class bill there. Hopefully nobody comes in and disturbs me. So current assets, less current liabilities. I'm just going to write a little note over here. Working capital equals current assets minus current liabilities, always. So in this question, we have one current liability. We have bank overdraft. And this is to the value of 12,000. So I'm just going to put that in the middle column underneath our current assets because we have to do a sum. So it's going to be current assets. Take away your current liabilities. 32,200 minus 12,000 gives us 20,200. And I'm just going to transfer that down here. 20,200 outside column. And this figure is known as our working capital working capital is always current assets less current liabilities okay so our next um, move here is to add up our total net assets so what does this company have what do we own total net assets What's the value of all the goods we own? So um, our total fixed assets are 386. Uh, 386,800 plus 2,200 equals 407,000. Total net assets. Okay. So that's our um, total net assets. And that's the first section of our statement of financial position done. We just draw a double line under that. And the next section that we have is financed by. Okay, and in this section, um, we're going to try and basically tell, tell or, or show where this company, Mart Limited, are actually getting their finances by. Okay, so um, we have a couple of things to enter into this section. Um, the first one is ordinary. share capital okay so and if you can remember back to the start of the question um, up here at the top we have authorized share capital to the value of 430,000 and we have issued share capital to the value of 380,000 okay so up here we're going to have authorized and issued okay so this company, Mart Limited, have gotten the go-ahead to, I suppose, sell ordinary shares to the value of 430,000. They are authorised to sell that many, but they have only issued 380,000. Okay, so this is the money that they, this is where they're getting the money from, investment from their shareholders. So we're, we don't need this uh, authorised figure anymore, but we do need the issued. The other place that they're getting their money uh, from is their their profits, okay? And from the question that we've already done, or the, the section that we've already done, we can see that they had a profit, a plus figure of 27,000. So we're going to add that one in. P and L balance. And this is the value of 27,000. 
Okay, and we're going to add these up. So 380,000 plus 27,000 equals 407,000. Let me just transfer that out here. And we draw a double line underneath it. And we know when our accounts have worked when this figure matches this figure. And this figure is known as our capital employed. Okay, I will be back in two seconds. I just want to turn on the light again. <clears throat> okay, so that's our final accounts question done. Um, remember that it is now called an income statement and statement of financial position and these were formerly known as a trading profit and loss appropriation and balance sheet question. They are basically the same thing. Okay. A um, couple of tips I suppose for this one would be to practice these questions obviously. Work on your layout of the balance sheet and the income statement. Work on your neatness because it just makes life easier when you're learning learning things off make a list of all the different current assets that you've come across make a list of all the different current liabilities you've come across learn that working capital is current assets minus current liabilities learn the layout of your finance buy section and i suppose make a list of all the different types of fixed assets that you know about and in addition make a list of all the different types of expenses that you've come across throughout your three years of junior cycle because when you start to analyse your trial balance, if for one of these were to uh, appear in your in your junior cert, you're going to be easily able to spot all the different sections. Okay, as we always say in sport, practice makes perfect, and even better, perfect practice makes perfect. Okay, a very common feature in junior cert is for people to forget the part B and the part C. Okay, so always remember to do part B and part C. Part B says, explain the term carriage inwards. Okay, what does this mean in the trial balance? So carriage inwards is the cost of transporting goods into the business. Okay, so basically, uh, transporting goods from the supplier into uh, the buyer. Okay, so, and this is usually paid by the buyer as well, okay, paid. So, for example, let's pretend Mart Limited were, um, let me see, let me see, let's say they were a lawnmower company, okay? They have to basically get lawnmowers from a supplier into their hardware shop and then sell them on. So, carriage inwards is the cost of transporting those lawnmowers into their shop before they sell them on. They would have to pay for that transport. You can't just expect a truck to pull up outside the shop for free. So they would have to pay the truck driver and the truck company for transporting those lawnmowers into their shop. Okay. Um, part C here, or is it part B, part two? Calculate the net profit as a percentage of cash sales using the formula provided. Net profit over cash sales by 100 over one. Okay, so our net profit from our income statement is 65,000. So in our working section here, it's going to be 65,000 over our cash sales. Our cash sales are basically our over-the-counter sales, and they were to the value of 500,000 by 100. Okay, so get your calculator, 65,000 divided by 500,000 equals... 0 0.13, is that right? I think it is, 65,000 
divided by 500,000 equals 0 0.13 and you multiply it by 100 to get your percentage and that will give us 13%. Okay, wherever you see an answer box, always put your answer in the answer box. Okay, so that's your final accounts question part A and B complete. You can print those off from examinations.e or study clicks. You all also have a couple of examples in your exam papers. Again, remember the basics heading into your junior cycle. Blue or a black pen, because these papers are now going to be scanned into a computer and you want to make sure that your writing is picked up by the scanner. Don't be writing in pencil. Okay. Also, purchase yourself a little Tipex. Okay, it's much faster than the, the this bottle of Tipex because this one takes time to dry and oftentimes what you'd find is that people rub on the tipex in this one and they forget to go back and fill in the actual answer they, they leave it to dry and they forget to go back so this one the little mouse one or two euro will um, dry instantly and you can you can write your answer just little exam techniques um, calculator if you're if you're stuck i got that this one for about 1.99 in mr price a little pound shop in town okay so make sure that you're preparing for your exams correctly. If anybody has any questions, please comment below. It's great to see the students um, giving some feedback. If there are any other types of questions that you'd like me to do, fee, uh, please feel free to comment. And also, I'd appreciate if you share this channel with all of your business studies friends because um, it's getting good feedback so far and I feel it is of huge benefit to all of you who might be studying now for the next week or week and a half at home without the aid of a teacher so this will allow you to kind of practice your questions and get yourself up to uh, a better grade I suppose okay thanks very much